Hello everyone and welcome to Thailand Unplugged. Let's have a quick peek at what we've got coming up today in the news from Southeast Asia and Thailand. A gigantic meth bust in Thailand suggests Chinese coronavirus isn't hurting the drug market. An American dog breeder accused of animal torture in Chiang Mai. An Aussie woman jailed in Bali for murdering a cop to be deported after serving four years. China to impose visa restrictions in response to the US visa restrictions. Over to Pattaya. Russian woman murders her one-year-old daughter. Not very nice. Is Thailand getting a bit pricey for the old expat over there, do you think? Hello, I'm Stephen Clark, bringing you the latest news from Southeast Asia and the wonderful land of smiles, Thailand. Those and many other stories coming up. The Thai authorities seized 1.42 tonne of ice, methamphetamine, worth about 284 million baht that was attempted to be smuggled into Malaysia. Two Thai nationals from Nikon Sai Tamarat were arrested in connection with the seizure. Provincial Police Regional 9 commander said the drugs were found inside 35 bags placed in a trailer carrying iron bars from Bangkok to Takapai. Police also took three pistols, two pickup trucks, a van, two motorcycles and four mobile phones from the suspects. The suspects said they were paid 600,000 baht to deliver the drugs to Narathawat. And this is the second time they have made the delivery. Preliminary investigation revealed that the two suspects were scheduled to deliver the drugs from Bangkok to Takbai, Thai-Malaysia border and were to be handed over to a man before being smuggled into Malaysia. Anyway, while police were investigating the two suspects, a phone call was made to one of their phones to order 400,000 speed pills. The officers plotted to capture the two on the phone, and they did. An American dog breeder accused of animal torture in Chiang Mai. An animal rights group has accused an American dog breeder in Chiang Mai of torturing more than 60 dogs he kept in cages. Staff from Watchdog Thailand visited Chiang Mai's Sarapi station on Wednesday and Thursday, July the 1st and 2nd, with evidence and complaints following their inspection of an illegal dog selling operation. Watchdog Thailand's Warariai Pongrongpong said that her staff visited the American house on Monday after he asked them for help taking care of one of his dogs. They arrived to discover dozens of sick and hungry dogs kept in cages, she said. The animal rights group immediately informed police and local animal welfare agencies who removed the dogs for treatments. Watchdog Thailand staff told police on Thursday that the dealer had no breeding license and had bred his puppies from sick dogs to sell abroad at 3,000 to 4,000 apiece. However, the Chinese coronavirus crisis meant the American could no longer trade, meaning his collection of dogs had to grow. The accused dog dealer has launched a counter complaint with police, accusing Watchdog Thailand of stealing his assets, the dogs, and claiming he asked the foundation to visit his house since he was sick and could not take care of the dogs by himself. He denied running a dog farm and said the animals had been caged to prevent them biting each other. Police are still sniffing around the case, seeing what they can come up with in a solution to the problem. An Australian woman, Sarah Connor, not that Sarah Connor, is set to be released from Karabakan Prison in a matter of days after serving four years for her role in the fatal assault on a local policeman on a Bali beach. The Byron Bay mother of two has spent the last four years in notorious Bali prison after the bashing death of a police officer, Wayan Sudurasa in Kuta in 2016. She was jailed along with her then boyfriend, British national David Taylor, after they were found guilty over the death. Connor will be deported back to her sons in Australia, having spent her time inside honing her craft as an artist and undertaking hairdressing and makeup courses. She will leave ex-boyfriend Taylor, who is serving a six-year sentence, Karabakan's male prison for his part in the officer's death. The couple were enjoying a night on the beach when they realised Connor's handbag containing 
Australian $300 was missing. They split up and searched for the bag and Tala confronted Sudasa, believing he might have stolen her bag. A fight erupted and Sudasa was hit with a bottle and a pair of binoculars. Taylor took his identification cards, which the judge were told had been cut up by Connor because she panicked and felt guilty. Taylor also told Sadasa was passed out on the beach and the pair maintained they were acting in self-defense. Connor insisted she only intervened to stop the two men fighting and said she was bitten by Sadasa during the fight. Prosecutors had sought eight-year terms, alleging gang violence had caused the officer's death. The court also heard that Sadasa had died on the beach several hours after he was abandoned and might have lived had the couple called for help. The bench of three judges found that there was no intent to kill, thus the couple were spared the murder sentence. Connor had previously said that Nightmare was supposed to be a relaxing holiday, resulting in her spending four years apart from her now teenage children. She also told Australian media she had since separated from Taylor, who is 10 years her senior. The former businesswoman received annual remissions for good behaviour, spending most of her time learning how to paint, crochet and do haircuts. Connor was expected to be deported upon release from Bali's crowded Kurabakan prison. However, this could be complicated by disruptions to flights with Australia due to the Chinese coronavirus pandemic. Earlier this week, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said the United States would restrict visas for some Chinese officials because Chinese obstructed travel to Tibet by U.S. diplomats, journalists and tourists. Reciprocal visa restrictions on individuals from the United States after Washington introduced sanctions against Chinese officials over Beijing's policies regarding access to foreigners seeking to visit Tibet. China's Foreign Minister spokesman Zhao Jing said in a daily briefing on Wednesday, in response to the wrong actions of the U.S. side, China has decided to introduce visa restrictions on U.S. personnel who behave badly in Tibet-related issues, Zhao said during the daily press briefing. Beijing said on Monday it will impose visa restrictions on U.S. individuals with egregious conduct on Hong Kong-related issues, mirroring U.S. sanctions against unnamed Chinese officials deemed responsible for curbing freedom in the city. China and the United States have traded visa restrictions over several issues in dispute, including the situation in Hong Kong, Xinjiang and Tibet. The United States has accused China of carrying out human rights abuses, repression in those places, while Beijing has denied the allegations and argues Washington should not interfere with their internal affairs. The US is attempting to obstruct Chinese legislation for safeguarding national security in Hong Kong by imposing these so-called sanctions, but it really never will succeed. Zhao, the foreign ministry spokesman, told reporters that China has lodged a complaint with the US over the bill and warned that China China will respond with strong countermeasures over the response from U.S. actions on Hong Kong and Tibet. Police in Pattaya in Thailand have detained a Russian woman who has allegedly killed her one-year-old daughter before jumping from her third floor apartment. Police alleged the Russian might have been hallucinating after taking drugs. Padia police were alerted around 2 p.m. of a person reportedly jumping from the fifth-story apartment building. When arriving at the scene, they found a 33-year-old Russian female national, her legs injured from jumping from the third floor. She was rushed to Bangkok Pattaya Hospital. When police officers then went to her apartment, they found blood splattered on the walls. In the bathroom, they had made a ghastly discovery of the body of a little girl lying under the sink covered with towels. The little girl had three cut wounds on her forehead. Documents found in the room suggested the girl who was one year and seven months old. She was Effa mother's daughter, the 32-year-old Russian national. Police also found a drug paraphernalia in her room. Officers speculated that the suspect might have been hallucinating from taking the drugs. They believe she killed her daughter before jumping from the balcony. The Russian woman told rescue workers first on the scene that her husband had abused her and caused the accident. The apartment manager claimed that the woman arrived with her husband and that the woman had checked in with her on the previous Saturday night. Police are now waiting for the Russian national woman to recover to find the exact cause of the child's death. <laughs> <laughs> 
looks like another sad ending for drug abuse in Thailand from foreigners. If you have any information about criminal activities of foreigners, contact Immigration Police Hotline on 1178 or visit Thailand Immigration on the internet. A 38-year-old man in southern Thailand has been arrested and charged with the repeated rape of his younger stepdaughter and illegal use of drugs. Local police arrested the man at his house in the Sala district, Nikon C. Tamarat province on Tuesday. The arrest follows a complaint filed by the girl's grandmother. She said the girl, who was under 15 years old, had been raped repeatedly by her stepfather. The rape continued for about six months. The girl and her four-year-old sister were in the house at the time of the arrest. The suspect also tested positive for drugs. The girl told the police after her real father died in late 2019, her mother took her and her sister to live with the man who had become her stepfather. In early January, she fell sick while out fishing with her stepfather in the boat. He raped her in the boat and told her not to tell anyone, threatening to hurt her and chase everyone out of the house. After this incident, he raped her many times over, both in the boat and at the house. The stepfather confessed to the crime, according to police. He was charged with statutory rape of a minor aged under 15 years, illegal use of drugs. The teenage girl was placed in the care of the social welfare office in Nikon T. Tamarat. Thailand's growing more expensive for expats. According to the employment conditions abroad, Bangkok and Chiang Mai are among the 30 most expensive cities for expats in Asia. The capital of Turkestan might not spring to mind when with considering the priciest cities. But according to the ECA International, it ranks first on both the global and Asian tables. A five-point rise up the ranking due to an ongoing economical crisis, food shortages and resulting hyperinflation. Now that's sending out warning bells not to go to Turkestan. The survey is performed in March and September every year based on a basket of items such as rent, utilities and car prices. In Asia, Bangkok ranks 28th, just above Chiang Mai, according to the latest ECA International Survey on the cost of living for expats but it is dropped out of the top 50 global ranking from the report released in December 2019. In global rankings Bangkok is now at 60 and Chiang Mai at 142. Bangkok has lost a good deal of its former appeal for budget conscious travellers and expats rising 48th place over the past five years according to the survey. ECA said a rapidly expanding economy and increased foreign investment, at least prior to the Chinese coronavirus pandemic, made Thailand more expensive, fueled by the strengthening baht. The Thai baht has strengthened considerably, making the country more expensive for expats and tourists. However, this trend has slowed over the past year partly in response to the government's attempt to weaken the baht in order to keep the country competitive. Hong Kong is the second most expensive city in Asia after Ashgabat, Turkestan, the one you don't go to, but ahead of Tokyo and Singapore. Singapore is rated the most expensive place for expats in Southeast Asia and has led that ranking for many years. Hong Kong remains sixth in the global standing one place ahead of the Japanese capital. Singapore was 14th in Asia, dropping two notches from the previous survey. Ashgabat's sudden rise to the top of the list largely attributed to the economical dilemmas of Turkestan's government, according to the ECA. The energy-rich Central Asian nation faces severe inflation and black market for foreign currencies has caused the cost of imports to rise both factors have sparked a large increase in the cost visitors pay to visit there. The ECA saying Chinese cities fell across the board due to the sign of a weakening economy and a poorly performing currency, even before the Chinese coronavirus began taking its toll. 